What's up, I'm Ijemma, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to walk through error handling and understand what it is, what errors are, and why it's important to understand how to throw and catch errors. This video is going to be split up into three different parts. In the first part, we're going to learn about errors and error objects. In the second part, we're going to learn how to catch errors. In the third part, we're going to learn how to throw errors and cap it all off with us understanding why it's important to handle our errors. So to start off, let's answer the question of what are errors? Errors are statements in JavaScript that prevent your application code from running as expected. When talking about errors, there's usually two major types that people refer to. The first type being syntax errors, and then the second type is runtime errors. Syntax errors are errors that arise from incorrectly writing out syntax for a given programming language. These errors are usually thrown during compile time, so this means that if you find a syntax error, chances are you won't be able to see your application code run until you address that problem. And the second type of error, which is more of an umbrella term, is the runtime error. Runtime errors usually occur during an application's runtime. So we can take a look at this example where I'm calling my function open window that lives on my window object. JavaScript doesn't really know off the bat if the window object actually has a function called open window or not. So while this application code is compiling, no errors are thrown. But the second I try to execute this code inside of my browser, I'm going to get a type error thrown because JavaScript realizes that open window doesn't actually exist on our window object. As I mentioned before, runtime error is actually more of an umbrella term and there's different types of errors that can be thrown in your application code. If you take a look at the MDM documentation, you can see the list of built-in error types like syntax error and even reference error. The error object contains a lot of helpful information for developers to figure out why an error was thrown or where an error was thrown. Some of the most helpful keys that I've used in my development process is message key, which stores the actual error message, and even the stack key, which stores the stack trace, starting from where the error was thrown. So now that we know what error objects are, let's understand how we can catch thrown errors. As your application grows in size and complexity, the chances of your application throwing a lot more errors is greatly increased. So to make your application code more resilient and solid, you can use JavaScript to try catch blocks. So in this example, we're wrapping around our window show window line inside of a try catch block. We know that window.show window is going to throw an error, so we preemptively place it inside of a try catch block so our application code doesn't error out. So the error that might throw the error is always placed in the try scope, and then the catch scope is responsible for catching that error and then handling it however we want to. So I call window.show window and I know it's going to throw an error. So we actually step into the catch block where I have access to that thrown error. And then I just print out the error message. The great thing about try catch blocks is that you have complete control over your application code even when errors are getting thrown. So a good rule of thumb is if you're ever dealing with a block of code that might be prone to throwing any type of error, whether that's a type error, a reference error, it's always a good idea just to wrap it inside of a try catch block. All right, so now we know how to catch errors, but what about throwing errors? The syntax for throwing errors isn't anything too complicated. We have the reserved keyword throw, and then we throw an actual error object. So in this example, we have throw new error, and then inside of my error constructor, I pass in my error message. So if you call this line at any point of your application code, it's either your application's responsibility or the consumer of your application's responsibility to catch that error and handle it appropriately. It's also important to note that if you already have an error object, you can always throw it again. So in this example, we have a try catch block and instead of our try scope, we throw another error. And then we're instantly moved into our catch block where we have access to that thrown error. Since we have control over the application flow again, instead of our catch block, we can throw that error again. So the responsibility of catching that error is moved up one level in our lexical scope. So it's super important to note that if you throw an error inside of a catch block, that same catch block won't catch that error. It's gonna bubble up to the parent scope. So at this point, we have a better understanding of what errors are and how to throw and catch them, but it's super important for us to understand why we even need to know how to handle errors. So to answer this question, let's look at the following example. So I have a function called append char to each item where it takes in two arguments, the first one being called iterable and the second one being char. And what I'm doing inside of this function is that I'm looping through my iterable object and appending char to each item inside of that iterable and then returning the final string that is created. So append char to each item expects that iterable will be an actual iterable object, meaning that it can be passed through the for of loop with no problems. So if I call append char to each item on a string and I pass in a dash, then I will have no problems and I'll get the output of each gemma with each letter having a dash in between it. I can also call this function on an array 
So I pass in an array with only one item and it's my last name. And then I pass in the plus characters. So the final string that I'll get is almost like with the plus at the very end. So far so good. This function is working as expected, but let's see what happens when we pass in a literal object. So I have a pen char to each item and I'm passing in an empty object and my second argument is gonna be a forward slash. Instead of me getting an expected string output, I'm going to have an uncaught type error saying that iterable is not iterable. So this is a really bad situation to be in because our application code wasn't prepared to handle any error that's getting thrown from our function. So in this case, we wouldn't be able to execute the future blocks of code that we have. So one of the biggest benefits of catching errors is that it allows us to continue running our application code despite the fact that errors might be popping up. So the biggest remedy to this problem is that if we go back into a pen chart each item, we can just insert a try catch block. So inside of the function, we're wrapping the function logic inside of the try catch block. And then inside the catch block, I could handle the error however I wanted to. So now that we've caught this error, we actually have so many opportunities to make consuming this function so much nicer and better for developers. If we go back to the uncaught error, the error message literally says iterable is not iterable. This doesn't make too much sense to the consumer of our pen chart each item. So imagine if you downloaded an npm package that implements this function and then you pass in a literal object, you're gonna get this error thrown back at you, but you don't exactly know what iterable is supposed to be. So as the designer of this function, instead of just throwing the error back or returning null or silently handling this error without providing helpful information to the consumer of your function, you now are able to throw an error that might be more descriptive to the consumer of your function. So in this updated code block, inside of my catch block, I'm actually throwing another error. But instead of me just throwing the original error and passing it back to the consumer of the function, I throw a new error that actually has a more descriptive message. So here I say your first argument can only be a string or an array. So when the consumer accidentally passes in a non-iterable object into this function, they now know exactly what they need to fix to make sure that they're using this function as expected. And that's kind of like the power of error handling. It allows you to control the flow and the understanding of your application code. So my recommendation is if you're ever catching errors, you should always try to make new errors with more descriptive messages that make sense to whoever is consuming your product, whether it's a regular user or a developer. But that's it on error handling. Hopefully you've learned something new and you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below, or you can send me a DM on Twitter and we can have a lovely conversation about error handling. And with that, I'll see y'all in the next one.